EWTN invites you to join us for benediction and devotions from the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament and Our Lady of the Angels Monastery in Hansville, Alabama. Adoration prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are really here in this sacrament. Night and day you remain here, compassionate and loving. You call, you wait for, you welcome everyone who comes to visit you. I thank you, Jesus, my divine Redeemer, for coming upon the earth for our sake and for instituting the adorable sacrament of the Holy Eucharist in order to remain with us until the end of the world. 
I thank you for hiding beneath the Eucharistic species, your infinite majesty and beauty, which your angels delight to behold, so that I might have courage to approach the throne of your mercy. I thank you, dear Jesus, for having become the priceless victim to merit for me the fullness of heavenly favors. Awaken in me such confidence in you that their fullness may descend ever more fruitfully upon my soul. I thank you for offering yourself in thanksgiving to God for all his benefits, spiritual and temporal, which he has bestowed on me. Grant me grace and perseverance in your faithful service. Amen. Please rise. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, Behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled and all Jerusalem with him, assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, we celebrate the Epiphany of the Lord. The word epiphany means appearance or manifestation. And every day of our life, we should be looking for the appearance of the Lord. In fact, he's right here on this altar in the Most Holy Eucharist, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ is present in every tabernacle in the Catholic Church throughout the world, body, blood, soul, and divinity, really, truly, and substantially present. And he waits for you. He inspires a star to rise in your heart. He calls you. The question is, 
are you responding? Jesus loves you with an infinite love, so much so that he who is the second person of the Trinity, God himself, descended from heaven and assumed our human nature and was born for us in Bethlehem, the house of bread. He's born into the Eucharist and he waits for you. We saw immediately the angels singing in the heavens, glory to God in the highest and peace to people of good will. And we rejoice that our life is one where we can give God glory by participating in his very life that comes to us through grace. We get to live the very life of God by grace through our baptism in the sacraments of the church. Those who have an open heart and respond to this grace are filled with great joy. Those people of goodwill, like the shepherds who came, the simple, the lowly, they realize that they belong to the King of kings and Lord of lords. But the kings of the world are also called. All peoples are called to the King of kings and Lord of lords and his rulership of their lives. And then there will be peace. The only way there will be peace on this earth is when Jesus Christ rules. Let us open our hearts. Everybody in the world, all those who have exalted themselves as kings, trying to exercise power, but without true authority, you are called today to humble yourselves to come before Jesus, to bow before him, recognizing that all authority comes from God and we are to re exercise it as stewards, only as stewards. And so all the kings of the world, the governors, the presidents, everyone, come to Jesus today. Do him homage. And then there will be peace on earth when we listen to his instructions. But if we're hard-hearted, like Herod, then we're troubled. And that trouble spreads throughout the whole world, and it only multiplies. Herod was so full of fear that he killed all the two-year-olds and younger born near Bethlehem at that time. That same type of savagery goes on today with abortion. Don't be afraid of these babies. Don't be afraid of the gift. Let us open ourselves to God's rule, God's ways, God's love. He loves us so much. He was born as a child for us to show us God's infinite love, infinite mercy, infinite goodness. That's what's glorified in the mystery of the birth of Jesus and now his epiphany, his manifestation to the whole world. The three kings teach us to act on faith. First of all, we must desire a relationship with God. That's what we're created for. The magi, the wise men, were looking for the star. They were attentive. They longed for this star to rise. But then they acted on it. Faith inspired them both to long for God and to act on the movement of the direction of God. When the star rises in your heart, you must move. You can't just think about it. Yes, there will be obstacles on the journey. Expect obstacles. The wise men had a long journey. Those who work in the pro-life movement, they expect obstacles, but they keep persevering. Those who are fighting for the true definition of marriage as between one man and one woman, they expect obstacles, but they keep moving. Those who embrace simplicity to overcome the materialism of this world, they expect obstacles, but they keep embracing simplicity. Those who obey God expect opposition from those who exalt themselves above God in this world, the atheistic liars of this world, plausible liars, but liars nonetheless. But we still need to be obedient to God. Those who embrace poverty expect obstacles. Those who embrace purity expect obstacles. 
When you embrace purity, the world and its lewdness, its promiscuity, its impurity will flood you and attack you, but you stay faithful. Let us all be pure and simple and obedient and poor and come to the riches that the king holds out to us. The king's brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We are to offer God our incense of prayer, our myrrh of accepting suffering to win graces for those who reject God and for their conversion. And we also bring him the gold of charity. Lastly, the three wise men show us that we are to be converted through an encounter with Jesus in the Word, in the Eucharist, in our hearts. Be converted, be transformed, and you see the wise men going home by another way. That way is Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. So let us be attentive to the star that the Holy Spirit raises in our hearts. We know that Mary is the star of the new evangelization. She always points out Jesus. She taught the three wise men who Jesus really was, the King of kings, Lord of lords, true God, and true man. May we be wise and turn to the true King who is wisdom incarnate, and this way there will be peace on earth. Otherwise, our existence is futile. If today you hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your hearts. Come to the King. Come and adore him. Amen.
Panam di cielo prestitis diehis. Oremus. Deus qui nobis sub sacramento mirabili, passionis tue memoriam reliquisti, tribue quesimus, ita nos corporis et sanguinis tui sacra mysteria venerari, ut redemptionis tue fructum in nobis jugiter sensiamus, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. The divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even until the end of time. <laughs> 